Hello, this is RVer Frank with Kathy and Coco. Laverkin is a city in Washington County, Utah. The population of Laverkin is around 5,000, and it's in walking distance of Herkin. The two cities have historically had close ties. Theories about the origin of the city's name suggest that it may be a corruption of the Spanish La Virgin after the nearby Virgin River, or possibly an error in the transcription of the term beaver skin. There's also a noted pony trust style bridge built in 1908 that rises some 200 feet over the river spanning over 75 feet in length. The city made national headlines in 2001 when the city council passed an ordinance declaring Laverkin a United Nations free zone. To think about it, it was like a, um, like a movie. It's a very unique community. The last place you'd expect Laverkin is the mouse that roared, only to be crushed by the Utah State Attorney General, the threatening communist ACLU group, the World Government UN, and the Utah media. The night of July 4, 2001 was surreal in the tiny town of Laverkin. On that night, specifically chosen for its patriotic symbolism, the mayor and city council met in special session to address what it saw as an urgent constitutional international crisis. They hoped to save the citizens of their town from a pernicious evil that the Congress, President, and Supreme Court of the United States seemed to ignore. The United Nations designs to usurp the U.S.'s national sovereignty. The Laverkin City Council decided to act by passing a U.N. Free Zone Ordinance. Not surprisingly, the ordinance sparked sharp criticism. Almost two weeks later, the Laverkin mayor said, We've been pushed far enough and long enough. We're tired of marching to the UN agenda. Newspaper accounts cite a councilman as saying, after displaying a map of the United States color-coded with areas purportedly under UN control, You may only have two years of freedom in this country, and I'm saying we do not want that to happen. The debate continued until July 24, 2001 when by a thin three to two margin, the city council voted in favor of a revised and watered down UN free zone ordinance. At the height of the tempest, Laverkin's reputation actually inspired curious passing tourists to inquire at city hall about buying anti-UN merchandise. Six months later, the storm seemed to have passed as quickly as it came. Although Laverkin was the first local government to adopt a UN free zone ordinance, it has not been the last. In 2001, the city of Bingham, New Mexico adopted an ordinance similar in style and scope to the one in Laverkin. In 2003, voters in Grant County, Oregon approved a similar UN free zone ordinance. In addition, a local citizens group has unsuccessfully lobbied Lincoln County in Montana to adopt a comparable ordinance. Thus, although hardly a legislative stampede, the anti-UN movement is not isolated to Laverkin. The city is also home to Paw Temp Hot Springs, a historic volcanic sulfur spring that sits on the edge of the Virgin River. As we are driving down the road between Laverkin and Herkin, you can easily miss the hidden turnoff leading down the winding steep incline that dips to the canyon floor below and the river cutting through it. The name of the narrow paved road is Enchanted Way. The street sign, if you happen to see it speeding by, makes one wonder where it could possibly go since it dips down immediately with no indication of a direction from the main road. Poplar, aspen, and other foliage line the road going down, creating a beautiful setting the minute you turn off onto it. As you descend, you can smell the sulfur, not only found in the pools, but in the river running below as well. They say a picture is worth a thousand words.
something is happening here which we don't really know what it is. And able to think of that in terms of sacredness. Any number of the elders talked about going to the springs and they would tell the stories that it was a sacred site and that they approached it like they would other sac sacred sites with uh, great reverence. They would give it offerings, often just other stones, but they would also approach it slowly. You know, you wouldn't just kind of march right in and hop in the springs and go, ah, you know, the, there would be this stop beforehand. Uh, this other Paiute tend to approach sacred sites and then back out of them in that same way. Some of the Paiute medicine men would actually communicate with each other through the waters, not just over land and, and dreams that they would communicate through the waters and some of the elders I talked to in Nevada uh, really understood the artesian system there exactly how the waters connected up and their their understandings have been borne out by scientific uh, study. Paw Temp, also known as Leverkin Sulphur Springs, Dixie Hot Springs or the Leverkin Hot Springs is a natural spring located on the Virgin River on the boundary between Hurricane and Leverkin. The sulfur springs produce approximately 5,000 gallons per minute or more than 7 million gallons daily of 107 degree Fahrenheit water. The springs release an astounding 109,000 tons. That's over 6,800 semi-truck loads of salt annually into the Colorado River, making it one of the top three pollutants of the river that is the lifeblood of the southwestern United States. The spring's high salinity and contamination levels, 10 times the maximum allowed for human consumption, limit use and pose unique challenges to regional and local water supplies. The springs are currently closed to the public. The Water District currently anticipates that the springs may reopen as a public community recreational amenity once environmental and safety issues have been addressed. A timeline for the reopening of the springs has not currently been established. Snow as they get, you'd think there'd be rivers. Welcome to Hurricane. 